Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for the first of Safety Change 2013 Safety and Quality Assurance How-To Series, Auditing Supplier Compliance and Management, focusing today on prevention versus reaction, and taught how to prevent non-compliant supplies from entering production, while also helping improving your cost of goods made KPIs. Levin, I'm one of Safety Change co-founders. I'll be joined today by Dave Detweiler, our VP of Customer Solutions. And during the QA session, we're going to bring in our VP of FSQA Applications, Dan Bernkoff, to uh, chat about any compliance um, or other FSQA questions that you might have. We're about 45 minutes today. We're going to start with a uh, view of some of the challenges in support compliance and management that you're having when working for suppliers. And we also understand that suppliers are people too. You're on the, uh, we've got many of you on the call today and looking at some of the advantages from the supplier point of view as well. Um, we'll then look at how food safety chain automation can help with those challenges. Dave then going to show you a high level look at what safety chain management management solutions, uh, such as ours, look like. We'll come and talk a little bit about return on investment and how to lower cost of goods made. And we'll end with a very, very brief uh, look at um, a little bit about safety chain, and we'll take all of your questions. Before we begin, let me give you just a few housekeeping uh, items. Uh, you don't have to wait until the Q&A session if you'd like to enter a question now, you can go to the toolbar at the top of your screen. You'll see a little arrow on the right-hand side. Click on that, and then you'll see the Q&A box. You can simply enter your question there and hit send, uh, or you can wait until the end of the session. And we'll stay on until we get to everybody's questions today. If you're having trouble with volume or if it's not clear listening to the webinar today through your speakers, you can uh, go back and use the number in your reminder email that was provided to you. We actually have quite a large crowd with us today. Um, for privacy reasons, if you're not in full screen, you can see the names of the safety chain hosts and speakers, but you will only see your name. You'll not be able to see the names of the other participants. And I know that many of you are wondering if the slides and or recording of today's event will be available for you. You will receive an email within 24 hours of today's webcast, and you'll be able to download the slides and the recording directly from there. And we'll uh, remind you again. And with that, let's move on to our presentation, starting with a look at some of the key challenges that, uh, that you're facing with supplier compliance and management. You know, the first challenge uh, when I speak with people in the industry when it comes to supplier management and compliance is just the sheer volume of documents. I mean, we can probably spend the next half an hour just discussing what kind of documents and how many of them uh, you get every day. But, you know, there's safety and quality tests. There's audit documentation, keeping track of registration, and et cetera, et cetera. These documentations have different specifications attached to them. They have different expiration dates. They have different due dates. Uh, it's very, very difficult to keep track of all of these documents They're in many different formats. And then not only are they difficult to track, it's difficult to access them for audits, for things like uh, performance trending. And this is only going to get more complicated because customers today are asking for more than just COAs. They want full visibility and transparency up and downstream. And so one of the challenges is just having all of those documents, getting them on time, make sure that you've got all of the information that you need, make sure that you can access all of that information uh, to respond to a customer complaint, an audit request, and, and really most important is to, to track performance. So that's one of the challenges that we'll be addressing today. We'll lead to 
us, of course, to compliance. Um, we have so many different uh, ways in which we, we are challenged by compliance today. There's obviously all of the regulatory compliance. And, um, and, and we, we haven't seen the, all of the FISMA new rules yet, but we know that they're coming. And so we want to make sure that we're doing what we can to prepare um, versus having to really, you know, scurry in a reactive mode. <clears throat> there are the non-regulatory uh, clients, you know, such as GFSI and the various schemes within GFSI. And, of course, there's customer compliance, not just for safety but for quality, making sure that you're meeting all of the customer specifications, doing all the right tests, making sure that they have the right information uh, to put the, the supplies into production. Um, and there is verification, of course, with CAs. And so, you know, doing this is a manual process, considering, again, all of the volume that we just spoke about. This is, this is really quite a challenge. And of course, one of the challenges is performance trending. Today, all of the different information that that's coming in from supporters very often is in different systems. It's in different files. It's annual. Um, often there's many different formats. There's paper. There's email. There's there's online information. There's there's PDFs. And you know, depending on the size of your company, a lot of this information isn't even in the same building. You know, it's just doing it's it's holding up product throughput. It's also making it very different to, to score, to benchmark, and to approve vendors and support by performance as well as mitigating risk. So then these are challenges again. Now, you know, I, I attend a lot of conferences in the industry. There is certainly a lot of talk today about supplier compliance. And a lot of it, you know, a lot is in the in the form of well, will suppliers do that? How do we how do we facilitate uh, supplier compliance and adoption of the systems that we want them to do? And it it always sounds you know that it's something that's kind of happening you know to suppliers. I spent a long time yesterday speaking with one of our new customers who's a very large supplier and. You know, this is something that if you're a supplier and you're joining us today, this is that helps you as well. Automating helps you get rid of the challenges that you have in having to communicate accurate information to your customers on time. Um, you've got different information that's due to your different customers. You've got to keep up with ever-changing specifications from your customers, from the various compliance uh, schemes and laws. Uh, customers want your information in different formats. And, and you can hit over the head asking, you know, to buy this system for this customer, this system for the other customer. And buyers, too, are not only looking for a way to more effectively communicate with customers, but looking for um, an automation solution that will work for all of your customers versus, you know, being to, to implement different technologies, uh, you know, by sometimes, you know, hundreds and hundreds of customers. So when we when we look at supplier compliance and management, and we look at food safety chain automation and how it can help, um, this really is for you know the the folks that um, are having to manage supplier compliance and for suppliers as well. And we want to just make that you know we address that. So before we look and see you know what this looks like, let's look through how food safety chain audition helps in the area of supplier compliance. So it's really a process here. And you know, when when people speak about supplier compliance, you know, a lot of times it starts with getting documents from supply from suppliers. And, and you know, after perhaps, you know, something been harvested or ready to be sent. But, you know, really when you look at, at what the end customers, services and retail customers uh, want today is, is they want safety assessments even before that. So safety chain automation, safety information and quality information can actually be assessed in real time from the field. 
online forms that are accessible from tablets, from smartphones, have forms where where different information and attributes can be entered, pictures can be sent. So, so that information can be sent to the appropriate people who can decide if there are corrective action, if that yield, for example, should be harvested, and, and to the next point in the supply chain with that safety chain. Then all of the inbound documents, test results, and more are received from suppliers. There's automatic notifications to suppliers when you know, for example, registration is about to, to expire. Um, and these can go out at times that are configured for you. So they can go out, you know, several days or whatever the right time is before expiration so that you can keep things going. When, these, when all this information comes in, and we should say that um, with food safety chain automation can come in any format. If suppliers want to enter it online via a portal, they can. If, it, if suppliers don't want to change the way that they're doing things and they want to still send the PDF, they can do that. We've got optical readers that can take that information and get it into the system. So all information, safety and quality, regulatory, is electronically filed now in a central repository. Not only is it coming in, it's being analyzed in real time as the information comes in to specifications. What happens, excuse me, if there are corrective actions that need to happen, automatic alerts go out to the right people so that you can prevent non-compliant materials, for example, and ingredients from going into production. Information along with corrective actions is date stamped and it's unalterable, which starts to build your training information and, of course, your on demand audit information so that you can be ready for an audit really on demand versus you know, know the many days, hours, and weeks that it takes now. Now, if no alerts are required and everything was in compliance, these are automatic generated to go to the next point in your supply chain. And then again, all of this information is available. It's time and date stamped. It's unalterable. So you can you can go to a customer site um, and, or to a supply. You can go with an iPad and you can have all of the information that you need for an audit. You also then have that information that's so important for trending and for scoring. Um, and all of this information is really available both upstream and downstream. So this gives you really, you know, the benefit of transparency and compliance and prevention. Go a little bit more into other ways in which you benefit from automating supplier compliance and management. And if you're a supplier, safety quality information to your customers through safety chain automation. The first is with your approval programs. Um, just to eliminate manual processes and make good decisions about your suppliers. You can automate and maintain current documents in library and online, that electronic resource repository for supplier and vendor approval. You can track documentation and expiration dates. And you can proactively automate notifications to suppliers prior to expiration um, or due dates of documents so that you have what you need when you need it so that you can take your materials to the next point in your chain. If there is compliance, you know, the goal here is prevention versus reaction. And this type of solution helps you keep non-compliant ingredients and raw materials out of production or come in the first place. This collects and analyzes supplier tests in real time. Again, those immediate alerts when non-compliant results are detected. It helps automate inbound COA acceptance when results meet regulatory, non-regulatory, and customer specifications. Uh, there's comprehensive manufacturing data automation. Again, this is information that is beyond just COA. It's for transparency.
frequency and visibility. And again, everything is time and date stamped. So your audit ready. I'm here having a little trouble. There we go. Get key benefit. I hear this so often about performance trending and analysis and being able to make informed decisions. You know, which flyers have the highest safety record with with the best cost. Uh, making sure that if you are if you're looking at you know working with new suppliers, you know, or you look new suppliers you've just started working with, how are you making decisions about suppliers? How are you doing continuous improvement or specifications? That central repository of data is just key uh, to being able to do that kind of analysis versus having everything in different places, including a story I've heard recently about finding, you know, very important papers in, in desk drawers. And if you're a supplier, this makes it much easier for you to work with your customers. You can track all of your customer specifications, no matter how many customers Customers you have hundreds of customers, thousands of specific specifications. They can all be easily configured in the system. You can send in the format that you're used to. The system can take data from, um, from really almost anything that's out there. Um, and so you're, you're not having to change the way that you do business to get your customers the information they need when they need it. And it helps you also respond very quickly to customer complaints and helps you be able to do rapid um, root cause analysis. So there's benefits here um, for those who are working with suppliers and suppliers working with their customers. And you know, for many companies, you are both the, the person using and the person uh, company supplying. So with a very high-level overview, we're going to turn it over to Dave Detweiler. Dave is going to give you a high-level look at what safety chain management supplier compliance looks like, and then we'll come back and um, and go to the rest of our presentation and take your questions. So that, Dave, I'm turning it over to you. And thanks, everybody, for joining. I just take a moment and, and, and kind of walk you through what something like this might actually look like. And we're going to do this at a, a pretty high level, but hopefully it will resonate for some of the folks on the call. Uh, what we're going to start with is the very beginning, okay? So what we're looking at here is a home page. And, and I would assume that some of you, uh, you know, on the phone are looking at different types of reports and Excel spreadsheets and, and things like that to pull the supplier compliance component together. And what I'm showing you here is just a, simply a sample. Uh, our home pages have the ability to... Uh, to push up uh, you know, any report that we're actually tracking, but you'll, you'll see a couple key elements here on this home page. Uh, one, I'm, I'm showing just simple compliance by supplier. And some on the phone might say, well, well what determines compliance? And, and that's the best part about safety chain, right? It's configurable. So, you know, the, the client to client compliance needs and determinations are gonna change, uh, but we can absolutely take in uh, to consideration uh, data elements, document elements, uh, possibly it takes into consideration delivery on times and so forth. Um, but we can actually push those out. Or, or maybe you want to see something more like the gas gauge you're seeing here, right? How are we doing just, just overall supplier compliance? Uh, again, back to my, my point in configurable, you know, you, you have the ability to determine what that supplier compliance looks like. Uh, you'll, you'll notice over here on the, the right side as well, uh, maybe a, a brief example of a supplier scorecard, and I'm actually going to show you an example, you know, uh, another example that, you know, many look at scorecarding, and everybody kind of uses that, that trendy term a little bit, but scorecard a lot of details in it. I'll notice down here at the bottom, we just, you know, took a couple guesses. Maybe you want to rank your suppliers. might be nice to be able to rank your suppliers. What are you going to rank them against, right? Uh, and that's configurable. What if, or I don't know many of you might go through the process of actually delistment of suppliers, and you can do that well. And maybe you have delistment codes. Uh, maybe tracking actually the NCRs, right? Do you have any open NCRs? Barbara made a great point, right? Uh, the ability for our system not only to start to uh, track certain elements from suppliers, but also those those compliance elements, right? And if there are any corrective actions that need to be taken from a supplier standpoint. Uh, thing about this page here, it's completely configurable, so you can actually drop and drag these boxes around your page to make you feel comfortable. And why we designed it this way was that many of you, 
you know, might want that quick that quick snapshot, right? You log in in the morning, how are we doing? Here's what it looks like. And you can consistently use our platform for that specific uh, opportunity. If I, if I take you to another view, a little bit about data, right? So a lot of times supplier compliance We'll talk about document management, and I'm going to I'm going to definitely address that here in a moment. But let's talk about if you're actually getting data. Barbara mentioned in process data. Maybe it's just data on certificates of analysis that's coming in. And when you can move from actually just tracking a document, you know, a PDF document, to actually having data, now you can start to track and trend and associate that. And what you're seeing here is a, is an analysis dashboard with differing filters. And maybe the filters are you filter by supplier, maybe products, maybe by specific tests that you have, or maybe it's even specific production data, as you're seeing an example here. But the ability to configure this and see some of those trends and charts uh, and how your suppliers are actually doing with the information they provide. So, you know, there's definitely two compo components to supply compliance. One being the ability to track documents. And like I said, we'll address a little bit of that here in a moment. But also that ability, once you have some of that transparency that Barbara mentioned and that ability to track and trend and see some analysis of the actual data you're receiving, you can start to, to take this to another level. Here's another example. Uh, you know, I'm using the term supplier scorecards. Everybody kind of has a different, different view of that. But this is just another sample report. Maybe you want to compare suppliers, right? Supplier one versus supplier two, or the suppliers of specific products and, and how they're doing. That ability to give you that tool and that information, all of a sudden you have actionable data to go back to your suppliers with and have, have true business conversations with them about, right? Rather than just having a filing cabinet full of a bunch of paper and, and trying to understand and take your best guess at, at, at how everybody's performing, right? Now you have some of that performance information to actually, um, you know, manage this. So the, the question typically comes, well, well, how do you get data in here? And Barb mentioned it a couple times in a couple different ways, but here's a, here's a nice example. Many of you on the phone are probably getting certificates of analysis with your inbound shipments, right? And the idea here is that we can take on the right side a certificate of analysis. And our technology allows us to actually Read this certificate of analysis. You'll see the tests here on the right side, and update into our system so it's dip. So yes, we absolutely store a COA, and you need that on your records and on your files so you can go back and pull them up to specific documents, and we do track those. But like I said, let's take this from a document conversation to a true data conversation. So now all of a sudden, you have data elements, and you're seeing them over here on the left side of your screen. Then our system. Them, you can have your specification set up. So you receive that COA, our system pulls this data out, actually compare it against your specifications. Okay? And just a very small baseline example of how uh, you know, COAs can come in and we can actually integrate that process. And the example you're looking at here is very simple. Many of you today might be receiving COAs via email or fax. Instead of emailing or faxing it to your email address, Maybe they email it to a, 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 safety, a safety chain address. We simply pull off that COA and then go through what's called an optical reader to pull out that data. It allows us to do the fun stuff that you saw earlier, tracking, trending, scorecarding, uh, that ability to actually have some data. What if something's outside of the specification? Our system will generate a notice, right? Hey, by the way, the information we just received doesn't comply with your specifications, or our specifications, I should say. Our system real time, as soon as we have that information and that data, will then generate off a notice or an alert and, and provide you information on it. What you're seeing, again, is just a sample, right? But this would be for, it's completely configurable. It can provide direction. You know, here's what I want you to do. It could be internal notice to some of your organization. could be an external notice back to that supplier, right? All that's capable and, and that ability then to, uh, you know, capture the information, uh, chain the data, and then all of a sudden make it actionable, right? Uh, so a little bit about us actually capturing data. One of the areas that we also see very commonly, not just that ability to read COAs, but also to take those forms, as Barbara mentioned. You might have receiving log forms, for example, 
you take that receiving log form and you put it in the hands of uh, someone down on the dock, and when they receive it, uh, they can actually complete you know, their form, and now again you have that electronic data. So maybe you're starting to uh, track uh, on-time deliveries, for example, or uh, you know, different items that you might have on your receiving log. Nice component about this in capturing data is that many of our clients today are not only capturing the data but also doing internal validations against the DOAs, and our system allows for us to actually receive that information, and then internally you go through your testing process, and we can do that comparison against the results. Okay. Uh, so last piece here, and, and this is a a, a pretty common, uh, you know, what everybody talks about when they talk about supplier compliance initially, which is document management. Hey, we have a whole bunch of documents, and you are those documents actually going across the top of your screen here, typically in between 15 and 20 documents that our customers are tracking by supplier. On the side of your screen, you're seeing a listing of suppliers. The other here is, you know, some color coding on the screen. Yeah, that's nice, right? It'll show you very visually. You know quickly that you know documents that might be coming up on expiration or documents that are past expiration. But real catch, it's not to be able to understand those documents that are coming up on expiration. We also facilitate the communication back to the supplier. So without any manual intervention, a system can generate a notice to the supplier number two saying, hey, by the way, Mr. Supplier number two, your part of audit report's coming up on being due in 60 days. Please put it back. So the idea is that not only can we be a document repository, and, and you all go through different audits and so forth, you need to be able to uh, you know, come up with these documents that you're tracking, and we can be a repository for it. But you also have that communications effort going on of trying to track down these documents. And the solution will help with that. It will help automate that process. And it can be said that you know, 60 days prior to expiration, we generate a notice. And in another seven days, we generate another notice, and we can do that continually until maybe you get to a point where we noti notify someone internally. Uh, you still haven't received that specific document uh, that's required. And then about the solution again is that you can group supplies together, so you have required documents depending on a specific ingredient, uh, depending on a, a you know, and and our system allows you to group those suppliers together, so you might have different documents that are required. Uh, last piece of this. Uh, just to wrap up what this might look like, I meant our ability to generate a notice to a supplier. Well, a supplier in that notice has a link where they can actually directly upload the document. And, and what you're seeing here is actually maybe a supplier page. All suppliers have access to do in our system is upload a document. The way to go about it, and, and a pretty common way that many of you might be familiar with, uh, one of the things, as Barbara mentioned, is we believe suppliers are people too. And one of the things we've heard from suppliers is we don't have to have multiple systems that we have to go to to continually you know, upload documentation. Okay, we heard that, and we heard that from suppliers. So what we enabled is not the ability for suppliers to come in here and you know, upload a document, but may just want to email that document back, just like they are today, where they're emailing it to you directly. And our system allows for that as well. So in that notice, we can provide them an email address of where to email the document. We'll see that email. We'll part the document and upload it into our system automatically. We're trying to make it as easy as possible to use, back to Barbara's point, make sure that we have suppliers buy into the solution, and then uh, that will allow you for, you know, obviously, your capture of documentation and allow you to get into that, that automated world. So a couple of covered there. You know, we talked a little bit about data, talked a lot about document control and document management as well, and hopefully give you an idea of, of what our system looks like. So with that, I'm going I'm to hand back to you to talk a little bit about ROI. Bye. Thank you, Dave, and I'm just waiting here to, to get control back. And um, we'll, there we go. So we're going to look like, and I'm getting See that I that I got it back. Jill, can you confirm or date that that you're seeing um, the ROI slide? You're going to see them for sure. Okay, great. Thank you. So now I've told you, you know, how safety chain management can help you with some of your challenges, and you've seen a look at um, what safety chain management looks like. These are your questions. We want 
want to just address a little bit about the ROI that, that you can achieve and how this can help you reduce cost of goods, ma goods made and, and also save money in other places. We understand that you, know, you need to build a business case for technology, that this is not the highest profit margin industry, um, but our, our customers are finding really across the board that, that this is seeing them time and money while creating efficiencies. So the obvious is, is that this eliminates many, many, many manual processes processes in terms of hours, in terms of errors that cost you money. This helps trend, trend raw material and ingredient data for supplier scorecarding so that you can make sure that, that you're getting what you were supposed to get and that you are getting um, you know, the best, highest quality, highest safety product from the vendors that are giving you the best price and it helps um, ROI there. It really helps maximize ingredients and process yields. I mean, if you're getting information ahead of time and you're catching you know, core safety issues before they happen, you can prevent non-compliant ingredients from going into, into production. So obviously that's going to increase yield. Um, you know, the equality issue that you can correct, you know, one of the examples that Dan likes to use a lot is, you know, you've gotten just supposed to have some ground meat that is um, 80 percent lean, and then you, you know, you do your own verification. You find it's 75 percent. Well, you might have to add some 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 more, you know, meat in there, highly lean meat to get it to the right, you know, get to the right uh, fat content. You're not able to correct it, but perhaps that supplier then owes you a credit. So there's lots of ROI there, and it, it reduces hold time to ship, so you're able to get product out the door faster uh, to the next point, and to your next customer in the chain. So it's really just a, a, a small example of how um, we can help lower your costs with safety chain management. So briefly, a little bit about safety chain so that um, you can a bit more about what we do without, uh, in addition to supplier compliance. I'm going to take us out of full screen here. So all of you now should be able to see at the bottom of your screen uh, the Q&A box, and you can uh, enter your questions into the small box and hit send on the lower right-hand side, and we'll get those cues while we're, while we're looking at Safety Chain. Safety Chain's mission is to help companies Ensure safety and quality compliance at all points in the supply chain with upstream and downstream. Um, we module for inbound with two sub-modules for supplier compliance and COA and specification management. We have a comprehensive production module uh, for safety data management. We also can work with LIMS or function as a LIMS for QA data management and statistical process and control, uh, asset data reporting, comprehensive GFSI compliance, and we've got a module for commercial compliance and finished project testing and results communication. So, you know, really farm to fork. Uh, these arrows could go both ways because, again, you know, at the end here, um, people are wanting more transparency and visibility, and we can provide that. The key benefits, again, this saves time, it saves money, and it creates compliance, it, it creates compliance efficiencies, eliminating manual processes. This helps prevent withdrawals and rejections and recalls, and ultimately what that does is protect your market value and your brand. You know, the picture is worth a thousand words when uh, people ask, you know, what is the safety chain difference in food safety chain management? It's all focused around prevention. Or if you think of us about, you know, would you rather would you rather go out by a smoke alarm? Um, or would you rather have to rebuild something after it's burned down? We help detect problems at the earliest point possible, whether that's a non-compliant ingredient or whether that's, um, whether that's a, a document that's expired that you need to make sure that you have, it's audited. And 
and you know, versus reacting to a problem, trying to figure out how it started and how much it's going to cost to repair the damage, which you know can be damage um, to, to market value, you know, loss of goods and goodwill with your customers, loss of brand with consumers. So, so you know, prevention versus reaction is is, is really what food safety chain management is is really all about. So with that, I'm going to take your questions. I'll, I'll put this up here so you can see this. We're addressing questions. Again, you will be getting an email within 24 hours. From that email, you'll be able to directly be able to download the slides and the recording of today's event. You'll also be able to request a free RI calculation and pricing, a private demo, any other additional information that you, you might want. We've got really great webinar coming up. Um, we've got um, on January 24th a webinar on audit readiness with Debbie Newslow from Newslow & Associates, uh, a very, a very well-known speaker on audit issues, and she'll be going through the challenges of all kinds of audits, talk about the importance of internal audits and how technology can help. Um, topic near to, near to everybody's heart for Valentine's Time, they are absolute um, everybody's favorite, Dr. David Atchison, is going to address the uh, two new proposed physical rules that were announced last Friday and what you need to know and what you need to start doing. This is, uh, you can register for those on the uh, chain site, safetychain.com. Um, we're also very excited to announce that Dole um, Fresh Bulls is going to do a webinar on their fresh approach to FSQA and um, use safety chain, their business drivers, their experience, lessons learned, future phases. That uh, is not posted yet, but um, it will be within a week. And if you're attending this webinar, you will get an invitation to that um, if it's not on the website when you go there. So that, let's get to some of the questions that, um, that we that we have here. Um, we have a question from Matthew. He's saying, how does your optical work when COAs are coming in? Does the COA have to be in a certain format to work? And that's, a, that's a great question, right? And, and that's what we all have, have been through. Uh, yeah, optical reader technology actually functions. It, it looks for data in, in specific areas, but what we found uh, to be the most beneficial is that ability to take your existing format. So typically, each supplier has a, a format that they're utilizing today, uh, or maybe it's even a format by the ingredient that they're providing. And we utilize their existing template. So we don't go back to the suppliers and say, hey, by the way, I'm trying to automate my supplier compliance, and you need to fit into this template. We'll actually take the samples during implementation of what you're already receiving, set those up and use those as the templates uh, to actually utilize the optical reader. So good question. Uh, yeah, there is a template to it, but we don't just have one template uh, or two templates. We'll use the existing template from the suppliers, and, and then uh, that's how the optical reader actually functions. And I want to remind everybody that we also have uh, with us now our VP of Food Safety and Quality Assurance Applications, Dan Bernkoff, um, and uh, he's available to answer questions for you as well. Dave will handle the system questions and, and uh, your compliance and management questions. Dan's available to answer those now. Um, excuse me. Um, and, um, let's see. A question from Martin that came in on, on my private chat. I love this. Um, I'm a supplier, and thank Thank you for acknowledging us with a little smiley face. Um, our customers change their specifications, particularly quality measures, continuously. How can this solution help us keep up with that? That's, that's a great question as well. And okay. Because we're software as a service, <laughs> we can, um, we can uh, adapt those quite quickly. Either um, uh, our customer can uh, change those uh, quality assurance uh, parameters or we are happy to do it for you. Uh, we know that uh, those specifications are fluid, um, but uh, we can adapt very quickly as we are a SaaS-based company, and so this is really a key, and we are happy to do that for our customer base. And, and I would add to that, Barbara, uh, I think she was 
speaking from the supplier standpoint, uh, our system can also yeah. communicate out, um, you know, if a, if a, a customer mm -hmm. is using our solution and they change those specifications, our system can generate notices out to that supplier, sure. um, providing them information on the updated, uh, the latest and greatest specifications as well. Mm -hmm. I, I want to follow up on something that Dan said about software as a, as a service. Um, we would take that last S service very seriously. Uh, we give you the choice. Again, you know, we we can reconfigure specs for you. You can configure them yourself. Um, one of the key things here too is because everything's being analyzed, it can send out notifications. But what's great is if you've changed specifications for something, even if um, the supplier didn't get those, that that material still being analyzed in real time with the information. So it will be caught and an alert will go out. And even if they haven't gotten any new specifications, um, the system has them and the system will catch them so that so that you can make sure that they're not going into production. So again, it's really got that big preventative focus. Uh, Diana is asking, uh, Dave, where is data stored and how can a company retain ownership of its records? Yep, so that's a good question, right? It, we are a cloud-based software system. Uh, so, so where's the document actually housed? Uh, uh, you know, it depends on where you're located in our country. It might be in Virginia. Uh, it might be outside of Chicago. Um, but it's actually in our hosting facility. Uh, the, 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 I think the point or the tone, at least, of the question, if I read into it a little bit, is it's always your documentation. It's always your document. It's maintained in the native format, so if your supplier provides it to you in a Word document or a PDF document, it's maintained as such, and it's always your information. Each of our clients run what's called a separate database instance, so the you know, data is never commingled, and these documents are actually your documents. Um, you have full access to them 24 by 7 to, to download, save, do whatever you'd like. We can even automate a process where we... You know, you ship the badges back to you if you want to house them locally. But the, the answer to your question is that they are housed in the cloud, uh, in a hosted environment, and are still owned by you uh, as, as our client or customer, if you will, uh, you know, and, and being the owner of those, those documents. Sure. I'll add a few things to that. Um, as, in addition to Virginia and Chicago, we are a global solution. Um, we're currently being used in more than 23 countries globally, and it's growing every day. And, um, and I've got Safe Harbor uh, certification. And um, I, 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 as you were speaking, I, I got another question about security. It's a very, very, very highly secure solution. At our always solutions these days. I mean, think about online banking. Think about the fact that most of you probably have uh, go online to to look at your paycheck. Uh, we exceed every security standard out there, and um, and and this is global cloud. Um, Dan, for you, I have a question from Harry. Harry is saying. Barbara mentioned traceability for root cause analysis. Can you elaborate um, a little bit on those capabilities? Absolutely. Uh, that's a great question. Oftentimes, um, when there is a quality issue or non compliant issue, um, uh, our system runs in parallel to trace and recall systems. Um, if there's a code date that's provided uh, and an item code that's provided, uh, there's a, usually a bank of quality assurance tests associated with the lot. Those can be um, food safety analytes. They can be uh, insurance um, analytes, and it's easy for us to, in a couple of base uh, code dates and item numbers, go directly to those records uh, associated with product at uh, code date. And let's see. I um, I think that those. I think that all of the questions, I see that there's a question from Dimitri uh, about whether this is a cloud solution. I think that we addressed that. So I think that, uh, that, that we with the questions. So with that, um, look at that right on time. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Enjoy the rest of your morning or afternoon, uh, depending on where you are uh, located. 
And we hope that we see you online at um, one of these great webinars coming up. And thank you, Dan and Dave. Have a great day, everybody.